let's take a look at organizational systems control. There's no universally accepted external control system. The control must fit the situation. So the focus here will be on the importance of integrating various controls through the systems approach. Preliminary control is designed to anticipate and prevent possible problems. To be successful, we need to anticipate and prevent problems rather than solving problems after they occur. Concurrent control is action taken to ensure that standards are met as inputs are transformed into outputs. It's more economical to reject faulty input parts than to wait to find out that the finished output doesn't work properly. Rework control is action taken to fix an output. Rework is necessary when preliminary and concurrent controls have failed. Most organizations inspect the final output before it's sold. Damage control is action taken to minimize negative impact on customers or stakeholders due to faulty outputs. When a faulty output gets to the customer, damage control is needed. The only way to continually increase customer satisfaction is to use feedback from the customer and other stakeholders to continually improve products and services. Remember that focusing on preliminary and concurrent controls cuts down on rework and damage. Relying on rework control is not effective because it's more costly to do things twice than to do it right the first time. Rework and damage control are not common. Organizations are commonly organized into four major functional departments. Information is a fifth major functional area that may be a standalone department or may fall under the finance functional area. Although in most organizations, the operations department is the only functional area that actually transforms the input into outputs of goods and services that are sold to customers, all functional departments use the systems process. Within each department, employees also use the systems process to transform inputs into outputs based on workflow. Other department members, rather than other departments, may receive their outputs. Feedback is needed for improvements across the organization. The steps in the control system process are set objectives and standards, measure performance, compare performance to standards, and correct and reinforce. The same control systems process steps should be followed on an organizational level. Set objectives and standards. Setting objectives is the starting point for both planning and controlling. Measure performance. An important part of control monitoring is measuring performance. Set times to check in and monitor progress by following up and comparing actual results to the objective or standard in order to know if you are on schedule to achieve your objective. A performance or variance report is commonly used to measure and evaluate performance. Performance reports usually show standards, actual performance, and deviations from standards. Correct or reinforce. If you're not meeting the objective, fix it quickly. Take action to improve. If you are, give positive reinforcement to continue meeting standards. When performance has affected others, also use damage control. There are 10 specific methods you can use to measure and control performance. These 10 methods fall into three categories of control frequency, constant, periodic, and occasional. Constant controls are in continuous use. The real issue is the degree of internal self-control employees are given versus external control imposed by managers. With the trend of participative management, managers are using more self-leadership. Clan or group control is a form of human resource control in which organizations rely heavily on structure and norms to ensure specific behaviors through peer pressure. Freeloaders can prevent meeting objectives. Policies, procedures, and rules are developed to influence employee behavior in recurring predictable situations. Standards are similar to standing plans and are in constant use to maintain control. Periodic controls are used on a regular, fixed basis, such as once per hour, or day, or every week, or at the end of the month, quarter, or year. Regular meetings and reports can be oral or written. Regularly scheduled meetings are common in all organizations. These meetings may be scheduled daily, weekly, or monthly. Budgets are among the most widely used control tools. The preparation of a new budget is a primary or preliminary control. 
As the year progresses, the budget becomes a concurrent control. There are two major types of audits, accounting and management. Part of the accounting function is to maintain records of the organization's transactions and assets. The management audit analyzes the organization's planning, organizing, leading, and controlling functions to look for improvement. The analysis focuses on the past, present, and future. Unlike periodic controls, which involve set time intervals, occasional controls are used on a sporadic basis when needed. Managers personally watch and talk with employees as they perform their jobs. Observation is also done by video camera and electronic devices. Special reports. When unexpected problems or opportunities are identified, employees report it to management verbally or in writing in an email or text. Management rate may request that a special report be compiled. With non-reoccurring or unique projects, the project manager needs to develop a control system. Many managers fear developing budgets because they have weak math or accounting skills. In reality, budgeting requires planning skills rather than math or accounting. You usually have prior year's budgets as a guide to use, which needs updating for the coming year. The operating budget includes the revenue and expense budget. You must first determine how much money you have or will have before you can plan how you're gonna spend it. A revenue budget is a forecast of total income for the year. The revenue budget adds together projected incomes from all sources like sales or product and location. An expense budget is a forecast of total operating spending for the year. It's common for each functional area or department manager to have an expenditure budget and they need to track monthly spending and find ways to cut them. Profits come from increasing revenues or reducing expenses. One thing to realize is yes, you should control and try to decrease expenses, but the only way to really increase long-term profits is to increase revenue. An important objective is increased revenues. So focus on innovative opportunity and recognition. The capital expenditures budget includes all planned major asset investments. The major assets budgeted for usually include land, new buildings, and all types of equipment. Capital to start a new business venture is referred to as risk capital and venture capital. The finance industry's job is to provide capital for long-term growth. An important step in the budgeting process is to prepare financial budgets. The financial budgets are prepared last because the operating and capital expenditure budget figures are needed to prepare them. The difference between the budget, also called a pro forma statement, and actual statements is that actual statements report past results, while the budget or pro forma statement projects future results. Financial statements are used by the internal managers of the firm, as well as external suppliers, creditors, and investors who make decisions about whether or not to conduct a business with the firm by evaluating its performance. There are three primary financial statements, which include the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. The income statement presents revenue and expenses and profit or loss for the stated time period. The balance sheet presents the assets and liabilities and owner's equity. The cash flow statement presents the cash receipts and payments for a stated period. Regardless of your age, think retirement right now. Be sure to put the maximum amount possible into an employer's 401k program, or at least enough to get any company match. Never decline free money. Put money into a good individual retirement account known as an IRA with no load funds. Coaching is a helping relationship to improve performance as it brings out positive emotions. It's an increasingly popular approach to building leadership skills. Coaching is the process of giving motivational feedback to maintain and improve performance. As implied in the definition of coaching, feedback is the central part of coaching, and it should be immediate, continuous, and motivational. When an employee is not performing up to potential, even when acceptable standards are being met, the first step is to determine why, using the performance formula, performance equals ability times motivation times resources. When ability is holding back performance, training's needed. When motivation is lacking, motivational techniques might help. Talk to the employee and try to determine why motivation is lacking and develop a plan together. 
Coaching should be viewed as a way to provide ongoing feedback to employees about their job performance. Part of the problem is that managers don't know how to coach or aren't good at coaching. Here's a four-step coaching model. Describe current performance. Using specific examples, describe the current behavior that needs to be changed focused on improving, not on wrong behavior. Describe desired performance. Tell the employees exactly what the desired performance is in detail. Show how they'll benefit from following your advice. Get a commitment to change. When dealing with an ability issue, it's not necessary to get employees to verbally commit to the change if they seem willing to make it. Follow up. Remember that some employees do what managers inspect, imposed control, not what they expect. State that you'll follow up and that there are possible consequences for repeat performance. Coaching, which includes counseling, should generally be a first step in dealing with a problem employee. Deviance is negative, voluntary behavior of problem employees that violates significant organizational norms, threatens the well-being of the organization, and is costly. Deviant behavior includes rudeness, stealing, violence, vandalism, frequently withholding effort, showing up late, leaving early, and absence from work. Discipline is corrective action to get employees to meet standards and standing plans. The major objective of discipline is to change behavior. Secondary objectives may be to let employees know that action will be taken when requirements are not met and maintain authority when challenged using coercive power. The Human Resource Department handles many of the disciplinary details and provides written disciplinary procedures. These procedures usually outline grounds for specific sanctions and dismissal based on the violation. Punishment usually varies with the severity of the violation. Many organizations have a series of progressively more severe disciplinary action. The progressive disciplinary steps are oral warning, written warning, suspension, and dismissal. The steps in the discipline model should be followed when employees must be disciplined. The five steps are presented here. Refer to past feedback. Begin the interview by refreshing the employee's memory. If the employee has been coached or counseled about the behavior or if he or she has clearly broken a known rule, state that. Ask why the undesired behavior was used. Giving the employee a chance to explain the behavior is part of getting all the necessary facts before you discipline. Give the discipline. If there's no good reason for the undesirable behavior, give the discipline. The discipline will vary with the stage in the disciplinary progression. Get a commitment to change and develop a plan. Try to get a commitment to change. If the employee won't commit, make note of the fact that the critical incidents file or use procedures for a written warning. Summarize and state the follow-up. Summarize the discipline and state follow-up of disciplinary action to be taken. Part of follow-up is to document discipline. If necessary, take the next step in the discipline model, dismissal or termination. You need to understand what the other person needs, but no matter how hard you try to do a good job and to satisfy all employees and customer needs, complaints will arise. A complaint is an expression of dissatisfaction with a situation. When you handle a complaint, don't just quickly dismiss it. You need to be responsive as you're using damage control. However, if you have problem employees with a bad attitude who are never happy and always complaining to everyone, they can drag others down with them, so it's best to discipline and fire them to avoid ongoing problems. Not handling employee complaints effectively can create resentment, low morale, low productivity, and increased turnover, so it's advisable to have an open-door policy that allows employees to feel free to come to you with a complaint. Here are the five steps to the process. First, if you're talking, they are hearing you and it's not about you. So you have to listen to hear the case. If you can't paraphrase the complaint, you usually can't resolve it. Second, complainers often have a good solution, but just because you ask doesn't mean you have to do it. Third, you may need to get some facts and talk to someone, including other employees involved in the complaint and your boss before you make a decision. Fourth and fifth, without a plan and implement the follow-up, nothing will change. You need to address the current complaint, but you usually need to take action so it doesn't happen again. Handling a customer complaint is critical because customer satisfaction is a major goal of many organizations. 
On the positive side, complaints provide feedback that can be used to improve. 